My name is Rishi Rutan. I'm a surgery resident at Tufts Medical Center and the Advocacy Subcommittee Chair of Physicians for Haiti, an organization based out of Boston. Welcome to the Health Justice Rally at Occupy Boston. Thank you for the Occupy Boston uh, family uh, for allowing us this time and space uh, to speak out. What we're going to have now is a speak out of patients, providers, anybody who's been touched by injustice in the healthcare system. Uh, we invite you to come speak and share your story. This is not just about bearing witness, but also consciousness raising and realizing that we're all been touched by the injustices in the healthcare system, both providers and patients. If you are interested in speaking, please uh, see Liz in the white coat. She'll be more than happy to sign you up. And to start, we're going to hear from Kevin Lucy regarding his son about how the VA failed his son, Jeffrey. Please, let's give him a welcome. We're the family of a veteran who came back. He was 22 years old when he went to Iraq. And afterwards, he returned. And he looked wonderful, except we didn't know that he was mortally wounded with the hidden wounds. Uh, basically, what happened is that he was fine for about six months, seven months, and then all of a sudden, all the symptoms exploded. The depression, the drinking, the uh, very heavy drinking, the continual intoxication. And he was afraid to go and reach for help because of stigma. See, he had applied to become a Massachusetts State Trooper. And if you're known to have any mental health issues, then of course he wouldn't be accepted. What happened is that on Memorial Day weekend of 2004, he finally agreed to go to the VA. We thought that we were delivering him to the arms of angels. The experience at the VA, regretfully, turned out to be one of the most fatal flaws for our son. Uh, he entered, and despite his telling them that he had three different methods and that he had bought a hose so that he could kill himself, they discharged him three and a half days later. Despite his sharing with them the intense depression, the stories that he brought back from Iraq, what they did was they said that they would give him medication and then set him up for outpatient counseling. So on June 1st, he returned back home. On June 3rd, uh, a single car accident totaled the car. He was fine. And then we tried to bring him back to the hospital on June 5th. The hospital wouldn't take him back in. So what happened is that I lost faith and I became very angry at the system. And we waited and Jeff started sliding down very quickly. We tried, uh, his mother Joyce, who is seated over here, had called the VA and told them we were watching our son die slowly. That was on June 14th. On June 15th, we were told to reach out to the VA, uh, to the vet center, and they did. But then the vet center delayed the system, uh, delayed an appointment for three days. So then on March 18th, Jeff and I went down to the vet center, and he was there for three hours. What happened was that they didn't have the resources. They had no beds. They couldn't take him in. The other thing that you should know is that when we did bring him in, and he was there for three and a half days, they refused to assess him. They refused because they wanted him to be sober for a period of months. They wanted him free from medication and free from any kind of alcohol, which made no sense to us. And then, to top it off, one of the people told us, look, if he starts sliding down, call the police, lie to the police, say he attacked you, or kick him out and let him hit rock bottom. So, on June 21st, we came home, I came home, and he was in a rage. And he was just running from room to room, and he was angry at the government, he was angry at everything. And I called the vet center, and there was this wonderful person who answered the phone, who calmed us down, who calmed Jeff down. And then later that evening, 
he asked if he could rock in my lap. Here you have a U.S. Marine Corps reservist. We rocked for about 45 minutes. And then the next evening, he was in my lap for the final time as I took the hose from around his neck as he was hanging in our cellar. At this point, we have said from that point on how the veteran health care system is a broken, dysfunctional system. It is a system that demands that the veterans meet its needs instead of the veteran having their needs met by the system. This is still going on seven years later. A uh, mother reached out to Joyce, called her, and said she was watching her son die slowly. And so we told them to please bring up our son's name when she went to the VA. Unless somebody starts caring, unless somebody really reaches out to our veterans, we will see them kill themselves slowly. Yet, uh, last night on the news, on a news program on C-SPAN, there was a woman doing a research study and she stated that veterans we lose at a rate of 80 minutes. One veteran commits suicide every 80 minutes. One service member actively serving right now will commit suicide every 36 hours. Please help our troops. Don't let this go on any further. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing.